Hi everyone. Well, we are back this week and we're doing something just a little bit different. We've got plants today. I am packing up, getting ready to move to New York and I have, I just created um, a whimsical, I say whimsical. What I did is I created my own little bookcase. I do not have a cat. My sweet sister does. One of them does. Um, but I have one of those Ikea bookcases. It's a little bit bigger than this. I have a couple of them where I just have put lots of books and then I have plants that I need to either find homes for because I don't know if they're gonna survive the car ride. But I just was having a bit of nostalgia and thinking this is a little bit different of painting some plants, painting some books. I'm gonna to talk to you today about what I'm reading this summer and a book I just finished that I really enjoyed and you might too. So I'm gonna paint. Now mostly before I start talking about all the books that I've been reading, I think we're gonna mostly paint today with yellows, greens, and blues with just maybe a pop of orange. So I had created this one a little while ago. Um, I thought maybe the pinkish reds were a bit too much. I was gonna soften them with some orange instead. Um, and again, just kind of like an ode to summer, to reading, to moving, all the things, right, as I'm finishing up and thinking about um, my next phase of life. As you can see, I'm painting on a different table today, a black round, but hopefully I think you might, might actually pop up a little bit better as we start painting together. So if you want to take a minute too and maybe create your own bookcase, you can see I've written some of my favorite authors in here. In fact, I'm going to write a book that we're going to talk about is a book by um, a first, I guess she's, well, she's been in news for a long time, but just finished her first novel. It was excellent. Janice Hadlow's novel, The Other Bennett Sister, that I'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, I also am going to, I, I've been through like a, a a bunch of fiction that wasn't good and so it was such a bummer I think when you read fiction or mysteries that are just not satisfying for whatever reason but I'm excited to tell you about this novel that I'm reading and I am going back to an Agatha Christie novel a Miss Marple mystery that I don't think I've read before that I know Agatha Christie doesn't disappoint so let's start painting I'm gonna get yellows greens oranges um, blues a little bit of brown I'm gonna start with a bit of yellow I've got cadmium yellow here on my um, palette and um, the blues I'm going to probably be using cerulean blue and this is ult ultramarine today I need to I have to put some more phthalo blue back on my palette so okay so anyways here we are going to start going again and I'm picking yellow this was another nostalgia pick for me before I start talking about the books um, my mom had painted my room yellow when I was a little girl, and I don't know what made me think about that, but it was a really a happy room, and I do love the color yellow. It was a soft yellow, and do you remember the wallpaper strips that were popular, like 90s, I want to say, maybe 80s, 90s? Um, so instead of wallpaper, wallpaper in a whole room, you just took like a strip, an accent piece, and my mom had... Um, paint had chosen these like sweet little lamps like very innocent very girlish um young girlish and then she did she was into stenciling so she stenciled my furniture with more lambs and this sweet motif and like yellows and pinks and lavenders if i'm remembering correctly and blues i think it was really not a lavender it was like a periwinkle um, anyways, I think I just have all sorts of memories coming back as I am packing, but then also like finding letters and old birthday cards. In fact, I just gave up two boxes of all sorts of letters to my sister who's going to organize them for me because I thought if I get into this project, there is no packing that's going to get done. Let's be honest, right? We'll just be in uh, an era. We'll just be in the past and loving, rereading everything and creating journals, all the things. So she's helping me out, out with that. And I am just kind of appreciating and thinking about the beauty that's been in my life the past several years in this area where I've been living in Northern California. But now that I've talked about that and we have our background done, let's talk about books. So I have to talk to you about Janice Hadlow's book, The Other Bennett Sister. I read some um, uh, Jane Austen uh, spinoffs uh, honestly, I think they were kind of more in the mystery realm, a bit disappointing to be honest with you. Uh, and um, it could have just been, I don't know, the mood I was in, but I just wasn't drawn into them. Like I was drawn into Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, um, even, uh, you know, Mansfield Park. So a Persuasion, another fantastic one. But I have to say that 
this book, The Other Bennett Sister, it's about from its the perspective of Mary, who is the middle, rather sour, always a little bit in a bad mood, always a bit like holier than that attitude, which is graded on the nerves of everyone. Um, it's from her perspective. And the book is really fun because the author kind of gets Mary, it gets Mary's perspective from the Pride and Prejudice through about the second ball um, that the Bingleys throw, right? The ball where Mr. Darcy um, basically um, t asks Jane to dance. And then you start to see the sparks kind of sort of start to go between them. And, and after that, and then the Bingley and Jane romance, all of that. And then it just stops and then shoots two years into the future and it really becomes Mary's story. And, and I have to say, I could not put this book down. I read it in about three days um, and I just, I just, I flew through it. It's very, very readable. It's almost in the style of Jane Austen, but I would say a little bit easier to read. And I, I just, I loved it. I loved the way that she drew me in. I could figure out, I could, I could guess of where the author was going, right? I knew how, I, I was pretty sure I knew what the ending was going to be, but there was enough tension in the book. I wasn't sure if it was, I didn't know how it was going to happen. And I wasn't sure if Mary was going to disappoint. Like, was she going to go back into her old ways? There, This really is a book about um, transformation to a certain extent. Um, but it's, it's very much Jane Austen style of transformation where you really get the essence and the spirit of the characters in this book. And with a little bit more of pulling out of the author's imagination of, of maybe what Jane Austen would have done if she had done um, a, a sequel or a perspective from another sister. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was really an enjoyable read. Um, and so I can't, if you enjoy Jane Austen, if you like period pieces, that would be a really fun summer read for you. Okay, so on the carpet, I'm just doing like a bit of a variegated. I kind of want it to dance a little bit. I don't want it to be flat brown, but yellow would be too much. I'm trying to get it to just dance like a little bit of a variegation. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes here. All right, just playing with my carpet, or my carpet. Yeah, well, yes, my carpet, painting my carpet. I'm gonna go a little bit darker around this flower face over here. Okay, before I go on to the next book, I'll tell you a little bit about my plants. I have three plants. I duplicated one of them over here on the windowsill right now, and I'm again, I'm thinking one of them's for my mom, and I, I need to for the 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 principle of the matter, bring it with me, right? Because it's been with me for a couple of years. It's this guy up here, and I don't know what kind of plant it is, but it's really interesting. I'm gonna grab a thinner brush because um, it has these long stems, and the leaves only grow like on the very end of the stems. And it's really, um, it's it's been a good plant. Um, I, I sometimes don't water it enough, and then it starts looking droopy, and then I, and then I water it. But I realize if I water it too much, it doesn't seem to like that either. So I have to tell you, plants can be a little bit particular. Um, and I'm not an expert at all. I'm not even a novice when it comes to plants, but I have just loved the plants that people have given me and every once in a while I'll buy a plant. But most of my plants, I think, well, again, the three of them, um, one of them I did buy and then the other two were gifts. The other one is this one here and she, my, it was one of my longest time friends, Sweet Chrislin, and I think she propagated it from another plant. I hope that's the right word. And it's been doing really well. It's quite the survivor. I want to bring it with me. I just don't know if it's going to make it. It's, in fact, I've got it here so you can see it. I'm one of these leaves. It kind of this has been dying off. And so, well, there you go. And I kind of clipped the ones that die, but we've got some real sturdy ones. It's not, it's in a really cute vase. I don't know if it needs more room. It's definitely getting thicker at the base. Um, I need to ask her when I see her or I should just shoot her a text today, but I really love these pretty leaves that stick out. And I'm going to go in deeper with the color, but just right now I am going to just do a light overlay here of these sweet leaves. And then the third plant, and this is what it looked like when it was smaller, so I kind of have a more mature of this plant that, that Chris gave me, and then I have the baby one. This one down here is a prayer plant, and um, it, it, it's called that, I was reading about this one, it's called a prayer plant because of the way that the leaves will fold up at night as if they're praying and then open up in the morning. And it is dark green leaves with almost like a blue tinge to them. So I will add in some blue. I will say that my leaves of my prayer plant don't do a lot of praying. I kind of tease it a little bit. Like, 
you don't look like you're a prayer of faith that you're supposed to be. Um, but every once in a while I'll look and be like, oh, it sure is praying. The leaves will bend up and in the morning they are opening back up again. It will, it, when I was reading about this planet said, I'm supposed to like, it's, it likes humid air conditions and I'm not really in a humid area. So I'm just grateful that it's lasted this long. I was doing a little bit of pruning of it the other day as it had lots of new growth, but then some dying growth just parts of it that were dying so anyways those are the plants that I have my three little plants that I'm gonna attempt to take with me in the car um, to New York we're gonna see how that goes I hope they make it they're such sweet little guys um, so going back to books I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to this plant going back to books the books that I have um, on my to read list I've got a couple of rereads. I have not read Hannah Whittle Smith's The Secret, A Christian Secret to the, of a Happy Life in many years. And I don't, I, I'd seen some quotes from it. I thought, I need to get that book a reread. It is such a classic. So I'm going to be rereading that book. And let me pull this in just a little bit so you can see this as I start getting into the, the different details here. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do the kitty cat next, my sleeping little kitty cat. Um actually my sister's cat that I am kind of I'm borrowing the sweet, sweet little kitty cat today. Um so that book I have and I've just started that one and looking forward to that read. It is one of those classic books for sure that I think a lot of people today don't know about. And I love the intro where um Hannah says, you know, this is, there's no secrets really. This is the truth of generations, but, you know, wanting to reteach them to today's generation. And, you know, there is something about that of just the same old principles that have governed life in a very, you know, a, a, just a wonderful way to live from the Bible that just need to be kind of retold and retaught in each generation. Um, I'm excited to see, um, I read this one when I was little, so I'm a teenager actually. So it's been many years and I'm excited to see what I remember, what, what hits me fresh, right? These books that, that what hits me fresh from, from when I um, was, you know, much younger in life to now, you know, well, well into adulthood. So I'm reading that one. Um, for a fiction, a tried and true friction, like I said, I've, I've kind of been through some disappointing no, um, mysteries and I, I really dearly love a good mystery. So um, I might pull out Chesterson's mysteries, his father round mysteries. I have a collection of those, um, but I, I did from the library. I grabbed um, Agatha Christie's 450 from the Paddington Express. I have it in front of me. Oh, from 450 from Paddington. I don't think I've read this one. If I've read it, it's been years and I have forgotten it. So I'm going to reread that one and I, or read it. And I'm looking forward to that. Obviously, I only have a little bit of time before I go. So I need to hurry up and read it and then get it back to the library. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm adding just a little bit of warmth to my little kitty cat. And to the tail. A Passion for the Impossible is going to be a reread for me. This is the story of Lilius Trotter, who is was unknown to me until I heard her story talk about on a podcast. She was a watercolor artist who, um, the artist Ruskin, John Ruskin, um, he, uh, I guess, she apparently changed his mind. He had, this is back, of course, in the day, too, when women didn't have the career opportunities that we do today or working opportunities, and uh, he had made some rather... Um, uh, he, had, he had just very interesting thoughts about women's ability to paint until he met um, uh, Lilius and, and took her under you know, as one of his pupils. She just flourished. But um, he wanted to become a professional painter and she opted to, she felt really a call to go to Algeria and, um, and, and bring the, the Christian gospel. They apparently had never heard of it. There was a lot of turmoil in the country, a lot of poverty. I guess women were exceptionally, she had a heart for the women there who are going through a very difficult time. And so she left and uh, left the, the opportunity to become, you know, a well-known artist and goes to Algeria. Um, it was very interesting too, because she went, uh, her health was poor and she couldn't get any sort of like Bible society or any missionary society to sponsor her. But she went anyways with a couple of friends, spoke, did not speak the language, very, very um, bold. 
And, and um, it's a fascinating story of bravery and courage and a deep love for people. Again, she said a deep love for other um, people who, who sought God and she really, um, who, who were not, who are just under a lot of stress. Again, ministered to women and children who had been neglected or abandoned by husbands and families. Fascinating book, but I'm, I'm rereading that one. I'm going to reread that one this summer. It was really interesting. I think it was inspiring. It's, even though she, she rejected the fame that could have come her way, she never stopped her art. She continued her, her watercolors and actually used it really within her work. It, it's just a really... Um, a powerful testimony of, you know, just life isn't what you think it's going to be. Um, but when you, especially the life of faith, which I think we often, if you're a person of faith, you have done things that you really felt strongly about, even though they didn't really make sense. And that can be really hard for other people, even people who love you to understand. And to read about people who lived with such so much more challenging circumstances than we do today, as far as even things like travel, um, and uh, language barriers that uh, were much more difficult to overcome, the barriers of being a woman in an age where um, there was a lot more barriers than it are today. It's very encouraging, I think, to, to see how their boldness, their bravery, their courage, her, her life of prayer and dependence on the Lord. Um, it's just very impressive. So that's another one. And I'll put all these in the show notes as well. And then finally, Louisa May Alcott's her life letters and journals. So I love being a little bit nosy and seeing what people write in their journals. I think it's really, really fascinating. I just finished, I did read Alan Rickman's journals that were published, their select entries earlier this year. And those were, that was interesting uh, because I'm not super familiar with the world of movies. There was a lot of it that I honestly didn't quite understand, but it was an interesting inside look. He was really, um, he was quite, almost like a keeping it as a re recording of his activities and the people he interacted with and the places that he traveled where I'm, I'm hoping with Louisa May Alcott that we have a little more of their her more interior life. That's what it's fun, right? If you're going to read a journal of reading the interior lives of the people, um, what they thought, uh, what they believed and, and what, what got them down, what encouraged them. I just think sometimes a journal can be such an intimate look at people at people in their, in their lives. So that is, those are some of the books that are on my, reading list right now for the summertime. I thought it'd be fun to share. Um, definitely a blend of fiction and stories. Uh, on my drive to New York, I have a couple of audiobooks that I'm going to be listening to. And I will talk about those on another, uh, another video as fed, because those are, those, those will be fun, especially the ones I always kind of like to do it in retrospect. These are the ones that I recommend, and because sometimes they're they're stinkers, right? And you're there's nothing like lifting, listening to a nine or thirteen hour audiobook, and it's a bit of a bummer. So I like to hesitate before I do any recommendations. So we are finishing up our painting here, and I think I might be going a little bit longer today. There's definitely more detail, right, with this, with doing the different books. I'm also trying to move the colors around, and just even adding. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to this screen here, getting some different different colors in here. These look good. You can see again, I've written some of my favorite authors on here just for fun. Oh, I don't think I put Lucy Maud Montgomery. I put one in the other sketch. I do love Lucy's work. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more of my orange that I had made up. I have a cup of coffee right here because you know, I am constantly drinking coffee and I don't know about you. Oh, I don't think I want to do that one there. But I'm also often losing my coffee cup as I wander around the apartment, especially if I'm working on things. So I don't know if other people do that too. We are going to maybe paint that a brighter color. Got this blue over here. I'll do a nice blue. I might even do a variegated coffee cup. That would be fun. Getting some more of my blue wet here. Dabbing that right at the top. Maybe we'll just make it blue. That'll be nice. Thinking too with the light that's coming in where I'm going to add in some more light and then a little bit more shadowing. I'm gonna pick up some more yellow here. Oh, and I just dipped it in my water. I won't be drinking from that again. That is the danger when you have your water cup right next to the paint cup. 
I know better. I really do. <laughs> All right, we're gonna add a little bit of yellow in the kitty cat here, blend up some more of these colors. Starting to finish up now, moving some things around. I wanna be cognizant of our time. We are definitely still painting in the margins of summer, right? Not tons of time, but enough time just to take a few minutes and enjoy the day and do some painting. I've got my pens here. I don't know about you, but I've got tons of pens often around. I'm gonna go ahead and color these in. I'm gonna mix a little bit of that Payne's Gray in the blue, and we're gonna do just a little bit of shadowing around the backs, down here even, up below the bookcase, over here. Nothing too big, and if you feel that's too dark, Go ahead and just add some more water. Adding some shadowing down here. I need a color here. I think I might do a nice yellow for here. A yellow book here. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to that one. And just wanted a bit more of a cleaner palette here, right? Instead of adding too many colors. It is whimsical and instead of being realistic but that's kind of the fun of these two. I can always come back and add a little bit more detail with my pen, adding the color there, add it darker here. I'll go back to that orange that I had created, and I don't have orange on my palette. I broke my palette, so <laughs> the part with the orange is in the other room. So I'm just mixing some of the cadmium orange pink, cadmium yellow and some pink to create to create an orange, and that's working out just fine. Add a little bit of just, just some details around here. Even a little bit maybe right on my window sills. Now I'm gonna come back with a little bit of the brown. Really quick here, finishing up. I'll do a little bit more of the shadowy just underneath the, the bookcase, right, where we would definitely see some more shadows hitting cover this guy up a little bit more too. Up against the wall. Those shadows often you know, add just a bit of depth here. I'm gonna put just a little bit on top of the bookcase, not like a lot, just almost a wash. I did a little bit want that white to show. And then what I will do is a little bit of that blue gray behind here, like behind the pencil, just down here. Okay, this is looking super cute. I think this is fun. This turned out really nicely, just something a little bit different, creating a little bit of a scene. It looks really peaceful. You know, it makes me want to go read instead of pack now, right? But I am, I am gonna do a little bit of packing first. I've gotta just slow and steady, gets it done. Actually, and I'm going to just try, do my best just to pack as quickly as I can in a couple of days because there's still people I wanna see and do some fun things with family, couple of little mini trips. So I'm gonna really try to be super efficient with the packing. Okay, you guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope too you are thinking about um, what you're reading this summer. I would, actually, I would love to know, so drop me a line inside. And if you have any book recommendations that you think I should check out, please let me know. I would, I would really enjoy hearing about what you are reading this summer. Okay. This is fun. We completed this about less than 25 minutes, but again, this was a little bit, a whole scene definitely takes a little bit more time, but I love it. So I hope you enjoyed this too, and I will talk with you very soon.